Welcome to the First United Church of Christ in Richmond, Michigan, with the wonderful and very dedicated Pastor Katie Daly. We welcome everybody. Our doors are wide open. With open arms, everyone is welcome to this church. Please enjoy our online service, and if you wish to contribute to this ministry, please look for the donate button on our website. Good morning, everyone, as we gather on this rainy morning, a rainy Sunday morning, and I want to thank you for your presence. I just want to call attention to you how important it is to have people in front of you. And we know that that's really true, too, when it comes to situations in our life where people don't want to come in person, especially to a funeral, because they don't want to see you cry. They don't want to watch you feel bad. And they find it a lot easier to just drop a check in the mail and say sorry for your loss when it means so much more when the presence is there. When you are there not to say anything, but to just be there. It means so much more. And for coming together on Communion Sunday, it's about being there for each other. We can't be there when we're scattered all over the place and nobody knows anybody anymore and nobody talks to anybody anymore. It's definitely been a change since COVID and you know it stinks because people don't have that sense of community at this time. So let us begin and thank those who continue to partner with us on a regular basis. Thanksgiving for our offerings that come in by mail. It's usually in our mailbox and online. God loves a cheerful giver. Let us give with an open heart in order that God would bless and multiply it and us according to our needs. May we present our offerings to God and all of you have. And our prayer for dedication. In Christ, do we need the light? Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you bless us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us and what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love. Through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now at this time, for those of you who are at home, if you would ring your bell for people who are in your home who want to, you want to come downstairs and pray with you, and light your candle, remembering that Jesus is the light of the world. And you know, we are to be the light in the world, the salt in the world. We are to be the flavor that everybody else wants to be part of. So light your candle, the bell has rung, and I wanna welcome everybody. We are a Kaya church, a come as you are church, and it doesn't matter where you are on your faith journey or if you've never, if you've never set foot in a church before, we don't care. We are here to be here to help you grow in a love for God and a love for community because we believe God is still speaking God wants to be with us. Our still speaking God cares not how much faith you have, only the willingness to grow in your faith. And so at this time too, I wanna to give a shout out to Erin Dunsmore. Erin had her new baby. I don't know if it was a boy or a girl, but she's asking for baptism on the 17th of September. So congratulations to Erin and her family on the new baby. And now let us pray. A call to worship. God willingly satisfies our greatest needs when we bring what little we have. Let us love our neighbor as ourself, joining in God's miracle working power. And if you're able, stand, otherwise continue to sit as we sing the church's one foundation. 
now for our call to confession. In this world of multiple pandemics and the promotion of individualism, there are many claims on our lives. In this moment, we remember the nature of our baptism rooted in God's grace we acknowledge before God and one another that we have not followed the model set before us in Jesus Christ with every confidence in God's grace. Let us, in our hearts, in the quiet, confess our sin. We have confessed where we have fallen short this week, where we could have been better people, more compassionate people, and our assurance of pardon. Hear the good news. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, and rich in love. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all of creation. Believe this good news and give thanks. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven, whether we deserve it or not. Amen. And now before our first reading, we pray for illumination together. Since we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your divine mouth, make us hunger for heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. Now I invite our reader for the first reading. Good morning. Our first reading is from Genesis chapter 32, verses 22 to 31. The same night he got up and took his two wives, two maids, and his eleven children, and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything he had. Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until daybreak. 
when the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him in the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said to Jacob, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, what's your name? And Jacob said, Jacob. Then the man said, you shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For you have striven with the Lord and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob said to him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, I have seen God's face, seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him, and he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. Thank you, Jack. And our gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 to 21. Now, when Jesus heard this, this is the, this is that he heard that his cousin John the Baptist had been imprisoned and would be killed. He withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. And when he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the village to buy food for themselves. And Jesus said to them, they need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, we have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled. And they took what was left over, of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. What did you hear? You heard about Jacob, and you heard about Jesus, and he did what a lot of people do when they hear the news of somebody's pending death or their death. He wants to be alone for a while. But what does he do? He responds to the needs of other people, which is exactly the way every single one of us if you want to move through a tragedy or a trauma and get through it gracefully, it's by what you do to help other people. It's how you can outreach to others that you become whole again. So, how does Jacob become whole? Well, who do we have? Bad boy Jacob today. Bad boy Jacob is wanting to go home again. 
He's been really bad and he's been away for a long time and all of a sudden he has a need for family and friends and connection. And he's full of fear. He's at the Jabbok and he's like, oh, what do I do now? It's no different. If you could imagine yourself maybe 30 years out of high school. Maybe when you were in high school, you were you were the kind of person who teased a lot of people. We call that bullying today. Maybe you were one of those who thought it was cute to make fun of other people. Or you were on the other side of the person who's bullying, teasing, and making fun. Well, an invite comes to a class reunion. Or I guess the same thing could be said for a family reunion. When families don't see eye to eye on things and don't want to talk to each other and try to put each other down, we are all at the Jabbok saying, I don't know if I want to go. Do I want to step foot in the school? Do I want to be with the rest of the family? They're going to bring back all those awful moments that I remember so well that I don't really want to feel like that stupid kid in the background who, because who knows because sometimes kids are just backwards in high school and junior high and sometimes there is somebody who's the bullying person they're not walking in the shoes of the person they're making fun of in the shoes of the person who's being made fun of might be a broken heart they may have had the family split up by divorce. There may have been a death in the family. Maybe they are unable at this particular time in their life to actually learn and to go forward because there's just something in their hearts that's prohibiting them from actually participating and really having an interest in maybe sports or school or activities or anything. But it doesn't ever give anybody the right to tease and to make fun of somebody. So an invitation comes for a reunion and you go, oh my gosh, the last place I want to go is to walk in that school by those lockers and remember what so-and-so did to me, or on the other side, oh, I remember how I used to make fun of that kid, how I tormented them, how I watched them sit at the lunch table all by themselves. And I chose not to do anything about it. Every single one of us finds ourselves at the Jabbok because we are saints and we are sinners. We have to face the music of our mistakes and sometimes if we've been the one on the other end of somebody making fun of us, we need to give them the opportunity to fess up, to be present so they can say they're sorry hard to do, isn't it? It's hard to fess up to our failings, but we all have them. I mean, it's just the way we are, at least right now, with those of us that are sitting right here in the presence right here. At the time that we were in school, we did not have all this internet stuff, all this everything always in your face, where every single thing that every single person did is out there, and they can't wait to blast it all over the universe. Sometimes, Things need to be just kept to ourselves. So for the kid that is bullied in the high school, in junior high, maybe they had a reason to just be kind of odd and standoffish and staying away. Maybe their hearts got broken. And then you have the bully who picks on them. Jacob was a bully. 20 years earlier, we know he was the one. He took away Esau's blessing. 
They were rivals from day one, from the day they were born. Esau was first to be born, and Jacob was holding on to his heel with, already from the womb, saying, I want to be first, I want to be first, I want to be first. So that's our Jacob. Bad boy Jacob. But he's at a reckoning point now. He's at the Jabbok. And what does he do? He's at the Jabbok. He takes a rest. And all night long, he's bothered. He's wrestling. Is it an angel? Is it a man? What's he wrestling with? Why is he wrestling? Poor Jacob. Well, he's at that in-between place, just like anybody could be about going to a high school reunion or a family reunion. Sometimes we just don't want to be with those people again. We don't want to feel the hurt. We don't want to feel and remember how awful sometimes people can be to each other. It's not just kids, even though junior high kids especially have a, a little tendency toward being a little bit cruel. But we remember that we're in that in-between place of back then what used to be and what we have the potential for today. So what was and what can be, it's the Jabbok. We know that in a reservation for RSVP for the class reunion, there are some people who just say, I'm never going back to that place again. And it's because of being bullied, stepped on, made fun of. And they're in just the same situation as Jacob at the Jabbok. He knows he did his brother wrong. And it's 20 years later. It's already after the fact. And you heard he arrives with his, his two wives and all his children. And he has already sent the wives and the kids across the Jabbok over there where Esau is going to be. But he also sent some spies. Go see what Esau is up to. What am I supposed to expect? Now he knows he stole his inheritance. And he stole the blessing. And he knows Esau said, when I see my brother again, I'm going to kill him. So he knows all that. But he also knows that he was wrong. He also knows that he was wrong. So he has to wrestle with himself before he's going to see Esau again. And, and his men come back and say, oh, he's coming with 400 other men. Well, isn't it great in scripture they always exaggerate? 400? You wonder. Was it really 400? We don't know. He's coming with some other people. And it doesn't look good for you, Jacob. So Jacob, you know, he was scared scheming still even then because he sent his wife and all his stuff ahead of time trying to pave the way so I can get back into the family but he's stuck you know in front of him is his greatest fear what Esau is going to do to him and behind him is his past of what he did his lies his deception his stolen blessing, Jacob is all alone. He just had a night's sleep with his head on a rock. No wonder he had a wrestling dream of fighting with God or an angel. He has emptied himself already of the things that protected him, his stuff and his family. He sent it all already ahead to Esau. And now he's struggling. He's trying to empty all those old fears, those old fears that have haunted him for 20 years. The Jabbok means to empty itself. So facing our fears always brings us to the edge of the Jabbok. Emptying of ourselves, our identity, our security, our possessions, our positions. We each have our own Jabbok. We must cross it alone. Nobody can do it for us. 
If you've been the bullier, it's up to you to go and say you're sorry. If you've been the one bullied, you need to accept when they say, I'm sorry. And we know that God is there and wrestles in the form of an angel, or we don't know exactly. And in order to get Jacob's attention, he dislocates his hip. But the dislocation of the hip, you know what? It's not just so much of a physical thing as it is a mental, psychological, and spiritual thing. That's what has crippled him. And each of us, in that time, we empty ourselves, we wrestle with God, and it didn't seem to mind it being whatever it was, the angel or God or however he struggled, to go to the mat and pin him down on the mat. Get in the dirt. Be there with Jacob. Make him think about what he did. And, and even me, as hard as I hate to admit it, I don't want God bringing me to my knees. I would wish that God would just say, oh, it's okay, Katie. It's all wonderful and glorious, and you don't have to worry about anything. When I know there are times when I have to fess up and say, I've really screwed up. I've really blundered. I need to go to people, and I need to say that I did this to them. And I don't want to continue doing it. I want us to be friends. So he gets into the dust and dirt with the angel or with God. So like Jacob, all of us, we wrestle with a God willing to become dirty in order to lift us out of our dirty messes of life that we have created because we have this thing called free will. And during our muddy wrestling matches, we are blessed and wounded with a name change and limp when daybreak comes. We see God face to face and we receive a blessing. Jacob's name is no longer the deceiver, the heel catcher. He is renamed and reborn and he's now called Israel because he struggled and prevailed. So we, we are no longer independent agents of doing this. You know, we think we're the greatest of all time, Superman, Superwoman, Wonder Woman, whatever it is, we think we can handle it all without God. No, we can't, any more than Jacob could. We endure through our strength in God and in faith. And then we become Peniel, people who wrestle with God face to face and receive new life. And the new life comes when somebody has the guts to say, enough of this, it's time that we become friends and family once again. Jacob, saint and sinner, you and I, saint and sinner. So we stay in the struggle for a while, but finally we're ready to reach that new day and, day and receive the blessing as we go to those who we have injured or who have injured us and give them an opportunity to say they're sorry or that we're sorry. And all around, we're all sorry because we're meant to be friends. We're meant to be together in relationships. So in the middle of the wrestling, the pain of being wounded and walking with our limp, whatever it is, our spiritual limp. God didn't answer my prayers. I've had enough of God. That one always picks on me. I've had enough of them. That's our limp. That's our limp. And we need to be in the presence of blessing. So it's too dark to see. And like Jacob, we may not know that God is present. God is present in our struggle. He's wrestling with us and encouraging us so that we can empty ourselves, 
and depend on him so that our Jabbok will be taken away and we can go to Peniel. A new day is dawning, if we allow it, and there is a blessing for each of us. It doesn't mean that things are going to be just hunky-dory, happy every, or happily ever after, but it does mean that God is faithful. God is faithful. And it means that God doesn't mind getting dirty to lift us up out of the mud and dirt of life's difficulties so that we can cross over to a new identity. You know, maybe you experienced firsthand some kind of bullying or you've been on the other end of it. You know, perhaps you had an invite to class reunion or a family reunion that when that invite came, you went, RSVP by such and such a date. I don't know if I want to be there. I don't know if I could stand being in their presence again. I don't know if I'm going to feel humiliated once again, or they're going to bring up stories about maybe it's some of the times I didn't have my assignments done or what I did. So we weigh it. Can I go? Will I go? Should I go? How bad will it be to walk into that situation once again? So we get stuck at that crossing. We wrestle with what used to be to what can be. And we're stuck in the dirt and mud of our Jabbok. And desperately, we're holding on to any hope of blessing so it can be a relief to our struggle. You wrestle with who's going to be there. Is that kid who bullied me going to be there? Is that teacher that never did anything about it going to be there? Is uncle so-and-so going to be at the reunion? He was never quite nice to me. Do I really want to be in the presence of somebody who's pretty much put me down all the time? Which one of you is going to be the bigger person? So you wrestle with whether or not you want to attend or be part of the gathering and the getting together again, because it's going to hurt. But you know, anything could be triggered when you go to an experience where you're not sure and how about if in those experiences we say, instead of looking at the negativity of all that can be said, how about we look at it in a positive manner that, hey, God's going to be with me in all of this, and it's going to be OK. Trust in God. Have faith in God. Recognize that you don't have to be the butt of anybody's jokes or laughter anymore. They can go to a reunion or a family thing and say, well, look at him. Look how he succeeded. Look how she's done. Who would have thought? You know, because everybody's not awake in junior high and high school. They wake up maybe in college if they've gone, or they wake up later on. Some people today don't really grow up until they're 25, 30. So we know that the things that we hold on to are not always a physical, something in your hip kind of thing. It's, it's the spiritual thing in your heart and the emotions that's holding you until you finally drop to your knees and say, you know what, God, I'm not going to be able to do this with you being present with me. I'm going to go to the reunion. I'm going to go to the family reunion. I'm going to confront these people, and I'm going to talk to them, and I'm going to be the best person I can be. If everyone could go to every encounter where there has been a little bit of friction and just think of it of, I'm going to be the best person I can be, because God's going to be with me. That presence is going to be there. Maybe you will experience something like someone who finally did go to the reunion, or class reunion, and the principal from all those years ago went up to you and said, 
you know, I followed your career all these years. I'm so proud of you. You have a wonderful career. But in high school, you were probably at the bottom of the class, am I right? And look where you've gone. Or in the family situation, you look at it and say, you know, we've both missed each other's love. How about we just go with every encounter like that and we say this prayer. God, I trust you. Please show me the way through. And long after that experience, you may still walk with a little bit of a limp, a little bit of a hurt, but you must depend on God for the future Jabbok crossings that you're going to encounter because we have them often in life. And each time, we have to empty ourselves before God and pray. God, I trust you. Please show me the way through. And the people said, Oh, okay. You notice in the front here we have a whole bunch of school supplies that have come in so far. And actually I'm finding out that at the dollar stores you can go and get the five dollar uh, bag and just get everything in it and it's like great for the kids going to be reading right behind us here getting ready for the new school year and so they will be coming in until the end of the month and they will be taken over to the school principal who will make sure that all of the kids have something new to start with and that way the kids are all into a happy start and school supply lists today are so different from 10 and 15 years ago. They are totally different from what we had and from even what our kids had. The expectations are just so different. So we pray. We pray for all the children who are getting ready to go back to school and for their teachers and the principals and all the faculty. New beginnings for them New beginnings for each of us who've wrestled with God and know that with God present with us, we can go to reunions and we could be the best person we can be because God will be with us. So as we gather our prayers together, every prayer is important, those in your hearts those that are said out loud, those that you have submitted online. Let us pray. Bow your heads. Compassionate, healing, and all-providing God, your word in the Gospel of Matthew says, when the people heard you coming, they followed you on foot and you had compassion for them and healed them. Without question, judgment, or classification, you met the crowd where they were through your power and provided every need. Your church is in need today, gracious God. We are in need of your compassion. Jehovah Rohai, our shepherd. Save us from our selfish modes of individualism that seeks to look out far beyond the crowd rather than seeing what's right in front of us. We are in need of your healing, Jehovah Rapha, our healer for those who are weak suffering and vulnerable we pray for those impacted by mental illness anxiety and depression 
calm their fears. May they be surrounded with your healing presence and know they are not alone. We are in need of your provision, Jehovah Jireh, our provider. Feed us with everlasting word that sustains us from day to day. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, you lead us to green grass in dry, desolate places where you multiply what little we have and feed us until we want no more. And as we lift up the prayers that we silently hold in our heart, we pray. We pray for the family of Mickey Carney, who went to the Lord on Thursday. We pray for Bobby Peace, brother of Terry Hunger. And for our onliners, especially for Carol, Carney, who is in a nursing home, and she watched her husband, my brother, die. So for all our onliners, and for all of our members who are in nursing homes or assisted living, and a big hello from Lucia Marshall to everybody. Talked to her yesterday. And for all of our homebound who receive our snail mail, we lift up our prayers and pray in thanksgiving for those who do stop by to say hello to them. And we thank you too. For the new niece of the Schrode family, they finally got a chance to meet her. Um, she was born in January, but they just met her for the first time. Abba God, Abba God, your people are following you today, seeking to be transformed by your Holy Spirit. Create in us hearts to become miracle-working change agents in the world, proclaiming the might of your awesome deeds. And now, as we prepare ourselves to share in the body and blood of Christ in communion, we pray together. Holy, holy, holy God of love and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory, O God most high. We remember that on the night of betrayal and desertion, Jesus took the bread. And he broke it. And gave you thanks. Saying to his disciples, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, Jesus took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Consecrate, therefore, by your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine, and bless us that as we receive them, 
we may offer you our faith and praise and be united with Christ and one another as we continue faithful in all things. Together, in the strength Christ gives us, we offer ourselves to you, eternal God, and give thanks that you have called us to serve you. Amen. Through the bread broken, we participate in the body of Christ. And through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And as Christ tinkles on the ivories, I will bring the bread and the juice to each one. the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. Take and eat. been able to snap the lid off. Drink this, for it is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and drink. Jesus Christ, keep and preserve us to everlasting life. And together let us pray. We thank you, God, for inviting us to this table where we know the presence of Christ and have received all Christ's gifts. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and let us show forth your praise in our lives. 
Through Christ our Savior. Amen. And please stand for our blessing and sending. Go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil, send no one away. Instead, feed all those who are hungry, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, love thy neighbor as thyself. Love and serve, serve the gracious and merciful Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. May each go forth from this day renewed, revived in some way, shape, or form spiritually, just like Jacob at the Jabbok. Go in the blessing of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you are salt of the earth, oh people. Just want you to know that in our book it says rain. We've been talking in the Gospels. The parables are all about the kingdom of God, so we're using that word in the song. Pastor said upbeat. Oh, yep. has ended let the service begin and on that very first slide I neglected to mention anything it was that big cloud when the atomic bomb went off in Hiroshima this is the day that we remember that sometimes just because you can doesn't mean you should if anybody saw the movie Oppenheimer you know that he said I am the father of death now. It should never be used. But the president at that time said, we're going there. We're going to stop this war. So just because you can, and that goes with all facets of life, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>